Hi, if you are working with entities, if you are working with entity framework or if you are going to work with entity framework core, then understanding of unit of work design pattern is very important for you. So today we are going to discuss the same with very easy code example. So let's move ahead without wasting time. So agenda for today is we will implement the unit of work design pattern uh, with the help of generic repository and DB context. Okay, and we will use the ASP.NET MVC application with entity framework. So don't worry if you don't know about the entity framework. So uh, because our focus is on generic repository pattern plus DB context means unit of work. So we'll use the same example that we have used in our generic repository pattern. So if you have not watched that session, so I strongly recommend you to watch that before proceeding and the link is given in the description of this video because this unit of work design pattern is very very important. Now we will cover all the basic things of unit of work design pattern including structure and advantages and we will quickly go through the code of last session as well so that you can understand, you can relate the things and basic understanding of object oriented concepts and MVC application will be very helpful for you and I strongly suggest you to watch the repository and design pattern as I already told you which is mandatory. Also watch solid design principle and type of design patterns. So let's move ahead without wasting time. Unit of work is a concept related to the effective implementation of repository pattern. Let me tell you I am going to share only the very very important points related to unit of work that you should not miss. Okay. The unit of work design pattern is used to group one or more operations usually database operations like CRUD or unit of work we call them so that all operation either pass or fail as one why it is important for a specific user action say suppose you are purchasing a book on a website and all the transaction like insert update delete and so on are done in one single transaction rather than doing multiple database transactions and unit of work maintain a list of objects affected by the business transactions and coordinate the uh, writing out of changes to the uh, persistent storage or that we call them SQL server or the database. The unit of work class serve one purpose to make sure when you use multiple repositories, please uh, give your attention, when we, when you use multiple repositories, they share a single database context. That way, when a unit of work is complete, you can call the save changes method on that instance of the context and be assured that all related changes will coordinate it. And all that the class a need is save method and a property for each repository. Each repository, each repository property returns a repository instance that has been instantiated using the same database context instance as the other repository instances okay so it will work in the same way so don't worry if the if these things are not clear as of now i will show you just in a few seconds when we will switch on the visual studio don't worry if these uh, concepts are not clear i will explain uh, again and again when we will move to the practical session just after a few seconds okay so entity framework has a db set because I am considering you know the basic knowledge of MVC application. So every framework, entity framework has a DB set class which has add and remove methods and therefore looks like a repository. Yes, you will agree with me. And in DB context class have a method save changes and so look like the unit of work. So it is possible to use entity framework and have all the advantages of the repository and unit of work pattern out of the box. So you can also relate all these things that I am saying with my last session in that I have also discussed what is the importance of DB context, DB set and how those work in our uh, and I have also explained these things in my uh, repository design pattern series as well. Okay, so let's move ahead to the uh, structure and how it looks like that's a very important part so the overall when we talk about the layered structure we have presentation layer we have business layer and we have data access layer where our unit of work exists okay 
and on the right hand side this picture is taken from the MSTN and it, it was very helpful and it is very important I thought I should discuss it with you one way of we are showing when we have no repository then re how request processed it goes to IIS then goes down to controller then directly communicate with DB context and then it works with the entity framework and database okay and when we work with the unit of work then it goes to IIS and goes down to controller then it communicates with the unit of work in that we can communicate with different uh, different repository but with single DB con uh, context object okay and then it uh, communicate with the entity framework and database and similarly as I always said in the uh, repository uh, design pattern session or in the generic repository design pattern session it is very helpful for the uh, test driven development or automation or unit testing so we can mock the uh, unit of work and we can use a mock repositories with a uh, uh, different sources suppose we want to consume API data suppose in memory collection is there suppose database uh, backend is there uh, re is required to perform the testing okay and then it will uh, communicate with the alternate persistent medium that I am talking about so all those mock repositories can communicate in that way so in that manner as well uh, this unit of work pattern is very very important okay so let's switch to Visual Studio without wasting time so this is my Visual Studio and MVC4 application I was talking about we will work on this to implement a unit of work design pattern okay so uh, before moving ahead let, let me give you a quick overview of this application how it's working this is my uh, model uh, book model it contains four properties it is my controller which contains typical implementation uh, for any controller like index add book edit uh, delete and delete book I have also explained all these steps in my uh, repository pattern or uh, generic repository pattern as well you can please watch them and this is my app DB uh, context in this I have created two DB sets for a student and for books and we are using a default connection so uh, and this is uh, the one the non-generic repository which is ibook repository where these are the methods uh, and these are the implementation of it okay and uh, beyond this in our last session I have already discussed how can we uh, overcome with this non-generic to generic one so we created these methods but keep in mind there is no save method here in generic repository interface and even in the implementation you will see uh, we have get all get by id insert delete and uh, delete uh, an update so there is no save method now the work for the save method we will include in the unit of work that's the power of unit of work and that's why we are using unit of work okay so if I talk about the unit of work interface so here you can see we are creating two properties of generic repository type and in that we are specifying the what type of repository instance it should return to us while we are working real time so for the first property we are giving it a name book repository and for the second uh, property we are giving a student repository and two types we are passing book and student okay so if you talk about the student one let me show you its id name email and date of birth so this is my model okay so these all things are specified here and uh, don't worry i will also show you how it looks like after running the application i mean uh, this is my migration folder if you are aware about the uh, code first approach these are my models and those these here is uh, our controllers book home and student one okay and um, we have already discussed a repository one in our repository pattern and uh, we have also discussed uh, the generic one as well generic repository and i generic one in our previous session and in this session we are discussing unit of work okay so uh, let me see the implementation of it so what we are doing here we have created one app db context uh, uh, please uh, focus here only one app db context instance is created okay and two variables of type generic repository and at runtime it will be assigned to book uh, generic book repository and generic student repository okay so these 
properties are doing the same thing so we are uh, instantiating this book repository by calling the generic repository uh, constructor and passing a type book and in that we are passing the context and let me if i uh, select here and press f12 so you will see we are in the generic repository implementation class and here we are as a input we are receiving the context right and we are setting in this uh, 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 local class uh, context and then we are at the same time we are also instantiating the db set as well i mean the type we are passing that type of db set will be assigned to it okay uh, let me go back okay so uh, okay here we are and for the same action is also performing uh, for a student repository okay so steps are same and the third very important one for which we have done all this hard work is the context dot save changes okay so i hope you have already uh, find the difference on this unit of work class there is only one place where we are using save changes so now uh, because we have to make few changes uh, before implementation let me uh, first show you how it's working as of now okay as of now uh, uh, we have not implemented the uh, unit of work it is working as it is a specific non-generic repository pattern based okay so here is our application if i click on edit and just give it a software application one and if i click on update so here we can see subject is updated and if i again click on it and if i make modification and click update so now things are working here so in the same way we can uh, perform delete operation as well we can perform add operation as well uh, make few changes because we want to perform uh, let me go to the controller let me go to the book controller first okay so here we can see if i expand here as as of now uh, we are directly using the book repository see uh, here we have uh, okay in add book it is uh, not required it is a get request but in post request see here we are using the book repository we are not using the generic one generic one okay in the same way if you will see the edit book we are using the book repository i am showing you before making any changes okay so uh, in the post operation of delete we are using the book repository and okay fine now let me uh, quickly uh, uh, add the changes just to save time okay let me paste all those changes now you can see all the piece of code which was related to uh, a specific repository that we say book repository i have commented here so we are using only unit of work instance to perform any operation in book controller okay please see it very carefully okay so in the book controller we are not instantiating the book repository okay let me minimize here and even in the parameterize book controller like we did earlier we are not uh, assigning any value to the book repository instance even we have commented it okay so what we have done we first uh, uh, create the very first step here what uh, we have done is we have created the this private unit of work object from the unit of work class okay then after that uh, you can see uh, okay here there is no change in the index action method uh, earlier uh, we were using book repository dot get all books but now we are using unit of work dot book repository which will give us a rest instance at runtime and calling the get all method and calling the view model okay and in the add book there is no need of change and in the add book post method here i have commented the book repository earlier we were calling the add book and save but now we are calling unit of work save method okay we are not uh, calling the uh, you know a specific repository uh, method but we are calling the unit of work which is saying all the addition task is saved by clicking on this okay and in the edit book here you can see we are fetching the detail with the help of unit of work object okay and in the edit book post method 
here we can see unit of work book repository dot update we are using and here we are performing unit of work safe method okay so we are not calling the specific repository method and here as well in the uh, delete book get method we are calling the unit of work get by id okay and i will show you how it actually working okay and just uh, one one more method to go uh, in delete book post method we have commented the book one and we are using the unit of work and handling the exception in this way okay and in the finally in the dispose method earlier we were disposing the book repository instance okay keep in mind but now we are disposing the unit of work instance okay so uh, let me save all changes and hit f5 to now we can see application is working in the same way if i perform any up uh, any changes on the book title programming in c sharp so here if i click here master class okay okay master std hit on update see the standard is updated immediately how fast it is wow and if i remove it okay just click on update so this is how it's working and we can add new books as well and we can perform delete operation as well okay so uh, this is the piece of work uh, that uh, i was using for the book management system i hope it is uh, clear for you how uh, unit of work is work and what is the actual meaning of unit of work if i talk about uh, this one so after performing this delete operation if any other thing if any other repository suppose you have a one more repository uh, uh, like a student repository and that one you want to perform here so just add those changes here and at the end you will click on save now we have gone through the practical session of unit of work but i also want to uh, share few more important point that you should not miss uh, let me quickly uh, cover those points uh, you could instantiate a new context for each repository but if you used multiple repositories in one controller each would end up with separate context which is painful uh, later you will use multiple repositories in the book controller and you will see how a unit of work can ensure all repositories use the same context okay mostly uh, we create the unit of work in the data access layer and we name it unit of work dot cs okay and repository implements i disposable and dispose the database context and its cred methods uh, make calls to the database context in the cred method the repository is now called instead of the context and dispose method now disposes the repository instead of the context that we have seen in the practical session the repository and unit of work pattern are used to create a abstraction layer between the data access layer and the business logic layer of an application that we have seen and these are the major advantages that i am discussing implementing these patterns can help you to insulate your application from uh, changes in the data store and can fac uh, facilitate automated unit testing or test driven development and you can easily manipulate data for testing such as in memory collection sql database in other cases you may need to retrieve data from api called different data source swapping also you can later make a fake object using mock for instance which implements interface so i strongly recommend you to do more experiment with this piece of code and every every piece of code is available uh, on github repo and the link is given in the description of this video okay so if you, you if you were using dependency injection because you might be thinking i am creating an instance in the constructor of the class so if you are using the dependency injection so you you wouldn't need the default constructor because the dependency injection would ensure that the correct repository object would always be provided or in the upcoming videos i will also create a session on dependency injection so uh, i will see you in those sessions as well so i hope you like the video thanks for watching if you have any question any comment any suggestion leave it in the comment box i will reply as soon as possible and in the next session we will discuss what is singleton pattern and we will also uh, gone through how can we create a thread 
safe singleton pattern your feedback is important if you like this hard work please hit the like button leave a comment and thumbs up on the video and don't forget to subscribe i will see you in the next video bye bye take care have a good day ahead